Hello? Hello? If you're paying attention to this, you're probably in grade eight and hopefully preparing to come to Cathedral High School. If you are, you should have your planning guide out. We delivered some of those last week. So hopefully your grade eight teacher has them and perhaps you'll have them in front of you. So I'll just give you a moment to hand those out if you haven't done so already. And we'll start our option sheet presentation. So this is all about preparing for next year, big step to high school. First, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Felice. I am one of the counselors here at Cathedral High School. I'd like to introduce Mr. Nordoff and Mrs. Rasso, the other two counselors. On this particular slide, I've included our emails so that uh, if you have any questions going forward, please feel free to reach out to one of us. And if I had to choose, I would pick Mr. Nordoff, but don't tell him I told you that. So let's welcome our family of schools. We have Holy Name of Jesus, St. Anne, St. Eugene, St. John the Baptist, St. Joseph, St. Lawrence, St. Patrick, and St. Peter and Paul. Students from all of these schools represent our family of schools, and we welcome you. So you will be our graduating class of 2025. I know that might seem like a long time away, but high school, four short years, and all of a sudden it's, it, it goes right by. So we want you to be ready. There's a ton of opportunities for you. And we're obviously going to be here to help support you and get you to that graduation in June of 2025. So what are we going to talk about? Well, it's a three part process here. We're going to talk about the registration process, which is very important right now because we need to get you registered and picking classes, which is the second part, selecting your courses. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the high school diploma requirements. Every journey has to start somewhere. Years ago, when you were much younger, you started elementary school. And now that time is coming to a close and something new is going to start. So maybe we're moving from something that looks like this to something that looks a little more like You're getting a little older, a little more mature, and you're ready for something new. So the major components of your registration process, first thing is your registration form. Second is your option sheet selections. There's a physical handout. We'll get to that in a second. Then there are the online courses and your selections on your MyPath. And then your activity fee of $40. If you package all these together, this is what uh, completes your registration for next year. So the registration form itself, uh, we don't handle this. This should be coming from your classroom teacher. Um, it's a form that you're going to take home. You're going to review. You need help from your parent or guardian. Correct any information, have them sign it, and then return that to your grade eight teacher. The option sheet itself, your teacher will make recommendations on this particular form about the level of learning for next year for you, his or her recommendations. Then you're going to take those home, review it with your parents or your guardian, and then make your selections on there, and then have it signed by your parent or guardian and, and for approval and bring it back to your grade eight teacher. So when you return that, so it's two things that you physically have to return back to your um, home school. Now the forms look something like this. The English side is in yellow and it contains all the courses that are available to you in grade nine. And for the French side, it's going to be green. The activity fees set this year at $40 and it can only be paid through school cash online. Um, the cash online instructions are available at this website. If you're not sure, all your um, elementary school home pages have a link to it. I'm sure you've used it, but this is the procedure for going forward. You make payment to your elementary school, and then later on the funds will be transferred to CHS, so you don't have to worry about that part. Now, apparently there's a uh, opportunity for you to print the receipt. If you can print it, print it and include a copy. 
as part of your package. If not for your own records, I would suggest you take a screenshot once you've made payment or take a picture on your cell phone and keep that just in case. The due date for this will be March 12th, which is a Friday. And starting the following week, we're going to come back to your elementary schools to pick up those packages. So very important you start working on that as soon as you can. So mark it in your calendar and get it in by March 12th, please. So today we're going to get into the nitty gritty of the path of success where you actually choose your courses. Now, one thing we should note is the difference between my path and my site. These are two different places. So the one account has, allows you access to your attendance, your credit counseling, where you can see your marks and the courses you've taken, your timetable. We're not printing timetables anymore. So lots of students link their MyPath account to their cell phone so they can carry their timetable around with them on, on their phone. Your locker number's there. Uh, volunteer hours, which you can start earning in July of this year, not before. It's only anything after July will be indicated there. And very important this time of year is the selecting of courses for the following year. The My Site side has your school email, your calendar, your Microsoft Office, your there's a, a button to book guidance appointments, whether they be in person or virtual, and your access to the LMS when your courses are uh, made available. This is where you have drop boxes and your teachers post assignments and things to do there, so very important. The My Site side, where you can log in from our school board homepage, and then the My Path is, is a separate account. So getting into the My Path, uh, you'll need the following. Computer, tablet, or phone, you need internet access, obviously. You can do this at home or at school. We're going to strongly recommend that you use your OEN number instead of your student number. And just make sure you add dashes after every three numbers because this uh, it requires those. Anytime we've had problems in the past, you can, you can try with your student number, but most times uh, when there was a problem, it was tied to the student number and the OEN number seemed to work all the time. So that's why we're suggesting you just start off right off the bat with the OEN. Your teacher can give you that number. Uh, have your teacher recommendation forms. Talk it over with your parents or your guardian. And then when you're ready, you can go to www.pathtosuccess.ca. And when you do that, you can, it looks like this. So the pictures sometimes change, but this is what the home page looks like. And what you're going to do is you're going to go over here and click log. Now you might be tempted to try to enter your email, your school email, and your password. But first, we're going to do the following. We're going to click register. Once you click register under group, you're going to select student. And then under student ID or OEN, we, again, we recommend you use the OEN number. Please use your school email. Try not to use any personal email accounts. If we need to help you out on Path to Success, very difficult to track you down or find you with a, a personal email, uh, your school email. You're a student of this board. You're going to have to get used to the idea of working through your school email. And when you go to college, university, all institutions have their own, will assign you their own email, and you access your courses and everything from that email. So please, uh, we recommend that you do do that. Confirm your email. And then add a password, and do not forget to write down your password somewhere, and keep it safe, and then click Submit, and then you can go to your school email, and there will be a verification sitting there for you. Once you've done that, you can go back to Path to Success, and you can go ahead and log in now, because you've completed the registration part. When you hit School Courses at the top of the page here, you'll see all the high schools pop up. You can go ahead and click on CHS. This is what you'll see next here on the left. You'll see courses um, by department. So if you click on any of these, they will um, give you all the courses in a particular department, uh, department. So let's say you click on English, then all the English courses will pop up. So if you wanted to investigate, you can even look into grade uh, 10, 11, and 12 to see what's available moving forward. Let's say you click on uh, uh, ENG 1D1 here. Okay, it'll give you the description of that particular course and the level of study. And if you look towards um, grade 10, 11, and 12, 
you will also see the prerequisites, which courses you need to have in place in order to take that particular class, which is very important. So once you've gone through this and you made your selections, you can now add that course to your backpack. There'll be a button there for you to click. So you can add to your backpack. Uh, maybe not like this, not this kind of backpack. Well, well, maybe not this one either. You know, backpacks, like maybe something like this. Oh, heck. You know who's the best to describe what the backpack is? I think we need some help from Dora. You have to say backpack. Backpack, except for this is an electronic backpack. In that electronic backpack, you're going to add courses from the English side. We have to pick a math, an English, a math, a science, a geography, a religion, one of the core French courses. Now, most of you are going to end up in either the, um, the 1D or the 1P. Now, some students by teacher recommendation will be asked or be given the option of taking the open. This is if you're really struggling in French. Um, that's a, that could be an option for you going forward. You talk to your French teacher about that. And once you do this, you can have access to two electives. If you're coming from the French immersion side, very similar and English and math. Again, the math is a new curriculum. We'll get into this in the next slide. Uh, a science, a geography. Now, please note that the geography is um, a little bit different. So this is for both sides. Notice that this one ends in F. So if you're on the English side, do not pick the one in F. And if you're on the French side, please make sure you pick the one that ends in an F. A religion and then a French immersion course, which is detailed right here. This is also in your planning guide. You can see it, in the, I think it's in the third or fourth page. And then a drama. So your first elective is ADA 10F. Again, only for the French side. And then you have options for one more elective after that. Now, with regards to the new math curriculum, the new course code here for math is MTH1W1. And this is a D-streamed math. This is a, it's not a new concept. It was tried before. Uh, the Ontario government's bringing it back uh, with some uh, minor changes to it. Um, so just about everybody will end up taking this course. So math in grade nine is pretty much chosen for you. There is one additional option here. If you're struggling in math, but you know want to move on to college or university uh, in the future, uh, the GLE, the gap closing, is a way for you to um, strengthen your math skills. If you pick this, it would take the place of one of your electives, and then you would end up getting the GLE 1OM in semester one, and then the D-Stream Math in semester two. And we find a lot of success with students taking this. We've offered this for several years and it works wonderfully. Um, if you're uh, the MAT 101, which is a locally developed math, will be by recommendation of your grade eight teacher. So what types of electives you can pick? Um, here's the listing here. You can see these also on page three of your planning guide. Uh, we have a drama, we have a music keyboarding, we have an instrumental class. We have a new dance class. This is something that is uh, new for you guys. Brand new one, we have a visual art. If you're at all not sure, you're not kind of like uh, with Microsoft Word and typing and stuff, this is a wonderful thing to take this BTT course because it helps you with Microsoft Word, Excel, and some PowerPoint. Learning strategies, the GLE will be by teacher recommendation. We have an Aboriginal, Expressing Aboriginal Cultures course. We have a boys and girls phys ed class, and then we have a wonderful TIJ exploring tech. This gives you a chance to um, take a look at all the tech courses like auto, woodworking. Uh, you get a sampling of communications tech, cosmetology, green industries. They're all part of that department with the hopes that you'll pick up one of those classes in second and third year. So lots of good choices here. So what are your graduation requirements? You need to know this like on the top of your head, what are those requirements? 
Well, it's in your planning guide too. If you take a look at page six of your planning guide, the complete listing is there. But these are the compulsory parts of your um, uh, graduation requirements. You must take four Englishes. That's one per grade, one credit per grade. Three math, two credits of science, one history, Canadian, one Canadian geography, one art, one health and physical education, one French. And then in grade 10, you take a half credit, two half credit courses in civics careers. That adds up to one credit. That makes up your core compulsory courses. Then in addition to this, the government snuck in a few more where there are groups. Now in the groups, in the group one, there's a social science or humanities or Canadian world studies. Group two would be a health, an art, or a business. And group three represent any senior science or tech course. I notice that cooperative education appears on all of these and so do the languages. Now most students will get these um, naturally as you pick courses throughout your electives throughout your high school career. So don't fret too much about it, but just be aware that they're there. Now, if you're looking at your planning guide, you'll note that you must take um, 18 compulsory credits. And then you have 12 elective credits, which include your religion. And if you add those together, that comes up to 30. So 30 is the magic number. You have to have a minimum of 40 hours of Christian service, which you can start in July. And in grade 10, the literacy requirement, don't worry about that now, you'll get enough of that when you move into grade 10. If you package all four of these together, if you achieve this, then you've earned your diploma. Now, a little bit about course codes. Okay, so it's time to learn how to master these course codes. Um, I'll take a little bit of getting familiar with, but with a little practice, not a problem. It's a six digit code. And you'll notice here in this example of ENG 1D1, the first three letters will indicate the subject. All the uh, English courses begin with an E. And then in the fourth spot here is, this is the next most important place value to take a look at. The one represents the grade level. So grade nine is one, grade 10 is two, grade 11 is three, grade 12 is four. The other most, that's probably the most important thing you need to look at here is the fifth spot here, which is the uh, letter it's sitting in here. So this D, this position will indicate the level of learning or the stream. In this case, the D is an academic. So this is where you're looking at to determine whether you have the right course for you. The sixth spot uh, is typically an in-school code and uh, special note to our French immersion students because the courses that you will need to take will have an F here. So for example, if we did a CGC 1P1, this would be a Canadian geography. The first three letters indicate the course code, what subject it is. You'll see that in the uh, fourth position, the one here indicates the grade level. And then the P would indicate that it's applied in terms of level of study. And the one is an in school. Religion, same thing, HRE 101. The one here indicates the grade level of grade nine. But in this case, this is open, which means this course is available to all students. Now, just letting you know, looking a little bit beyond high school, there's lots to choose from. There are lots of options for you. Uh, all you have to do is work hard and you'll, you can be successful. There are 20 colleges across Ontario, 19 universities, uh, dozens of apprenticeship opportunities. This is where if you wanna be a skilled trades worker, um, there are lots of trades. Some of them are very difficult and they pay well. You can start your 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 journey before in the skilled trades. You can, it's part of the um, OEAP program. You can start it before you finish high school. So lots of opportunity, you just have to work hard. So again, we're moving towards college work or an apprenticeship or university or direct to the workplace. Great, uh, your high school years are to prepare you for those possibilities. Quick note about just uh, moving from um, different types of um, courses, the university and or college. If you start here on the left-hand side, you'll see, uh, we're gonna move this way across the chart here. Uh, if you're gonna try for like, this is just a, a general sampling. There's so many different um, things I could have put in here, but if you wanna be a therapist or an engineer, you're looking at anywhere from four to six years of post-secondary at university. 
uh, at college, the three-year technologist programs are all three years. Um, they include co-op as well. If you're in the technician, you're moving towards uh, two years. If you enter the skilled trades over here, these can be anywhere from two to five years, depending on the trade that you enter. In the case of the skilled trades, you can get paid along at the same time that you're learning. And then over here at the very end, you'll see the skilled trades assistant. And that's usually one to two years. And that's moving basically from the more conceptual to the more hands-on as you move down this way. So I mentioned these before, but it's worth noting courses like keywords you think you need to know moving forward. Compulsory courses are courses that are a must. You have to take them. The optional elective courses are generally if for your own personal interest or you might be exploring a particular career path. And then the word prerequisite, not critical for grade nine, but moving forward in grades 10, 11, and 12. These are courses that have to be in place before you take the class that you're trying to choose. So it, it's a very important to plan well. So which level is best for you? We recommend that you talk it over with your grade eight teacher and pay attention to his or her recommendations. Speak it over with your parents and your guardian and or your guardian going to come up to um, uh, some choices there based on those conversations. So again, you have three levels of study basically in grade nine. You have academic, applied, or locally developed, and some classes are available at the open level. So how this translates when you move forward, if you move forward from grade nine and 10, so if you're looking at the top here, you're moving from grades nine and 10, and you're moving to grade 11 and 12, what happens? The locally developed, changes to a workplace, the applied changes to college, and the academic will change to university. So the academic courses are the harder classes to take, but they do offer you the most opportunity. So we encourage you to, to take the courses that will challenge you, that you can handle, not necessarily the easiest ones, but the ones you can handle with effort and you can do it because depending on what you do, sometimes it's better to struggle in an academic class a little bit than it is to do well in an applied. Um, but again, talk it over with your classroom teacher and your parent or guardian and uh, come to those uh, decisions um, as you move forward. So academic classes, you might be asking, well, what are the differences? You have to learn things or concepts and things you need to know. The important thing here is in the delivery. The delivery with these courses are more on the theoretical or the abstract, the less concrete, more working things out in your head. Whereas in the case of applied courses, the knowledge and skills that you need to know are more approaches are more practical, a little more on the real life side of things. Uh, there is more hands-on approach and there's some theory built into that. That's why the academic is a little harder and then with the locally developed, the skills that you're learning and the concepts you're learning are designed to help you with everyday living. So success in high school depends on, for me, number one, it's motivation. Are you motivated to do well? Are you interested? Now you're not gonna love every course you get, but are you willing to work hard? Are you willing to be inquisitive? Are you asking questions? And the second part is homework or the effort. And if you're not putting an hour and a half of homework uh, a day in high school, then you're probably not doing what needs to be done. Some students will have more than this, perhaps double that per night. Uh, and, and some days you may have a little bit less depending on your, your semester and your course load. But you should be bringing things home every day, either reinforcing or working ahead on assignments, studying for quizzes and tests. This is normal um, behavior if you want to be successful at high school. If you put the time in, I guarantee you good things will happen. So CHS has much to offer. We do have the French Immersion Program. We have the Advanced Placement Math, which is for advanced math students. Uh, you're actually getting a first year calculus, um, university level calculus. You have the Advanced Placement in Science, which applies to physics, biology, and chemistry. Again, you're learning first year university science. We have seven specialist high skills major programs, which connect co-op with your academics and some certifications. Another wonderful program. We have the Mohawk Dual Credit for those students in grade 12, 
looking to go to college, you're actually at the college taking college credits with college instructors so that you can bridge the gap between high school and college. And the cooperative education program, again, puts you in the workplace. So you're actually earning high school credits while you're learning a job at the same time. And the next step from that is the OEF program or the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program. You could be on your way to earning a good living and the stepping stones for that will happen before you finish high school if you're involved in that, which is really great. So let us get you there to graduation and beyond. We, you can like and share us and follow us on all the social media platforms. Check us out there. And um, if we are following this up with a synchronous Teams meeting, if you have any questions, our counselors will be available to help you. If not, then we'll be do a follow-up meeting at a later time. Please have those questions ready. We'd be uh, glad to help you, and we hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you in September. Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> see you. Bye. See ya.